so here's something interesting for me. So obviously I'm I'm really locked in on the on the Phillies and, and what they're doing in the draft. I love what they did, obviously. Um they took a guy that Nick Abel that me and you both love in the first round. But mm-hmm. just my my point here with them, what I want to talk about is, is a couple other guys they took in this draft. Um the position players they snagged. Uh Casey Martin, the shortstop out of Arkansas, who we talked about a little bit before this. And then um in the fifth round they took an outfielder, Baron Radcliffe, out of Georgia Tech, who has mm-hmm. super juice, right? Like, I mean, yes. super juice. He hit a ball 470 feet this year. Um, like, he he has legit juice from the left side uh, that plays the system back part. What's the concern? Why is he a fourth-round pick? A ton of swing and miss, right? Not mm-hmm. a high-contact guy. A lot of swing and miss. Casey Martin has a lot of swing and miss um, as well. So that kind of led me to asking, can you – take swing and miss out of guys in development. Um, Cause Heston Kirsten has another guy who's got a little bit of swing and miss. There's guys yeah. all over this draft where there's a lot of swing and miss in them. So my question for someone like you on the hitting side, can you take swing and miss out of guys? You can't take swing and miss out of guys, but that's not a problem. And here's why. Cause swing and miss will always be a part of their game, but you can improve their hit tool gradually through plate with plate this and better awareness of what works for them and i'm actually working on a piece for prospects 365 right now about development of hitting in general and like why certain organizations develop hitters well and the success rate of guys who are high swing and miss you look at them in the draft the top 30 if i read off the names you'd probably be like who but there's a variance there And when you talk about swing and miss guys, they're low floor, high ceiling guys. There's Chris Bryant's, Aaron Judges, Joey Gallows of the world who are going to compete for MVPs in the league. But then there's also guys like Victor Roach and Mike Zunino and guys like that who you're just like the bat never played. And for some of them, even never made it to the big league. So why has it not been successful? Well, there's an organization in the Cubs that have developed two guys who are high swing and miss guys who have gone on to be highly valuable major leaguers in Javier Baez and Chris Bryant. Well, what did they do well? Well, when those guys reached their organization, they didn't start coaching the swing and miss out of guys. And by coaching, I mean mechanically coaching them out. You have too many moving parts. Your head moves like this. Your body moves like this. You need to land in this position. You need to be in a position of balance, blah, 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 blah. These guys were first-round talents for a reason. Chris Bryant broke records in college with BB Corp for a reason. Let Chris Bryant be Chris Bryant. And Chris Bryant was a launch angle guy before it was big. So, like, his swing was funky. People had concerns with the swing. It's not going to play when he's facing better pitching. You know, he was at San Diego. You don't necessarily think that he's played the best competition. He's not in the Pac-12. So, there was definitely concerns. But what the Cubs did is say, hey, listen, Chris, you're going to have swing and miss in your game. It's always going to be a part of your game. But if you hit for power and you stay doing what you're doing now, you're going to be successful. So you really have to preach the individuality and you have to let the guys like Heston Kirsten and Austin Hendrick are two guys that come to mind right away with big swing and miss, but big time power. That's going to play in the big league level. If somebody gives them a chance to, and they both have bat swirls, bat wiggles, whatever you want to say that people would consider, Oh, you're going to have a hard time catching up to Velo. Well, people forget Heston Kirsten played in the sec and faced 95 every Friday night. And he did fine. He swung and missed at a 22% rate, but he still was first team all conference. So like you just accept, yeah, you accept the fact that swing and miss, it's a part of baseball today. And then we can also talk about what new organizations are doing well and what some of the best organizations do so well is there's new age baseball thinking and coaching. So what's that? You could do vision training. People are starting to dive into some interesting stuff with vision training in it. And if organizations aren't buying into it, they're crazy. I know uh, Iowa is probably the number one. That's what he says out there is the number one thing to hitting is vision, which makes sense. Why wouldn't it be? But they do vision training for their guys all the time. And that's like number one, what they do. They test it and they try to get guys to see. And they've seen massive developments. So you have that. But what else you have? Mixed BP. So you go out there and instead of just throwing 40, 40 BP, 40 miles per hour, 40 feet away, you throw in deuces, you work counts. You just work variable training where guys are putting in a situation. And I call it, you have to train with an active mind. And what does that mean? So when you're hitting, you're not just 
Oh, just swing, swing. Okay. It's down the middle, swing, swing. You have to train with the thought of recognize and react, recognize and react. It's not just expecting something middle, middle. You don't know what you're getting. So your active mind in the box. So there's mixed BP, there's slider machines. You could crank a, a hack attack up and throw the nastiest sliders that these kids have ever seen. And then when they get in the game, it looks so much easier to hit. And then you could do velo machines and things like that. So there's so many ways to do it. And that's why I'm so passionate about it is because the reason it hasn't had a high success rate is not because the player, I mean, sure there's a high variance, but it's not because the players are at fault. It's because organizations developmentally have not put these guys in a position to be successful. They haven't properly developed the hit tool because it is possible to develop a hit tool very easily. I mean, what's the saying? It's like, don't treat the problem, treat the cause of the problem. Mm-hmm. Something like that, right? So it's mm-hmm. like you're saying, like, hey, we can't just, I'm not going to go in there and, like, if we just start mechanic, like, you're taking super athletic, like, obviously really good baseball players who are playing at such a yeah, high level. First round talent. Professional town. baseball. Exactly. Like, you have to let them be them. You have to let them mm-hmm. move the way that they naturally move, right? These guys are first rounders. They're the best of the best. So mm-hmm. to sit there and think that like, hey, I'm just going to beat this mechanical agents in because now they're in the pros and they're not ready for it. Well, uh, it's just, it doesn't make sense. And some of it, like, sometimes we need to be used a little more common sense, I feel like. Because it's mm-hmm. like, hey, like you said, let's treat something else. Let's make the hit tool better. If swing and miss is going to, if you are a better hitter, you are going to swing and miss less. Are you going to yes. take swing and miss out of it where these guys are going to be great contact hitters. No, the game's trending away from that anyway. Mm-hmm. We have more swing and miss in our game. We have more juice in our game out of out of guys at the major league level, right? So, yeah. but if we can make that that hit tool better incrementally and it continues to get better because they're, you know, they're seeing the ball better. They, like you're talking about doing this PP, which is something that I love and love the thought of, like where now they are training to pick up sliders and they're training to see those things. Like, now they can get the bat on. Now they can put good swings on it. Yes, the strikeouts will still be there. Yes, it'll still be swinging this in the game. But, again, I don't think it's something that is necessarily going to, like, stunt them or, or cause them not to, mm-hmm. you know, reach their potential. And it's a long process. It, it really is. I mean, right. look at Joey Gallo. He was a 2010 draft pick, I believe, 2011 maybe. And this was the first year he hit above 250. He's right. been in the big leagues for a while. So it doesn't come right away by any means. And it, I'm not sitting here claiming that Heston Kerstad's going to hit 270 with one summer of doing those training. And with the Orioles, he's got the right people to be there doing. They're forward thinkers that are going to put him in a position to develop every day. And I think that's the most important thing. I, I was at, I was talking to a friend about this, and I asked him, when do you feel you develop as a hitter the most? And the answer he came up with, pre, uh, we were talking preseason. And he said, when we do live at-bats. Right. And I go, well, yeah, for the first two weeks, we hit straight up BP, and you just feel like you haven't gotten any better. Then you make a huge jump in that one week you've hit live ABs. Well, why don't we try to get as many live ABs going every day? And it doesn't have to be from an arm. It could be for it nope. can be from forty feet. It can be from a coach. It can be mixed BP. And even if it's just a velo machine and seeing velo, your body naturally. So that's when you're going to develop the most. So preseason college player feels there's four weeks before the season starts where they're practicing, and he makes the most gains in one week. Well, imagine what you could do if you spread that out for four weeks. And imagine what you could do in a professional season when it's over four months. So when you get a guy like Kerstad, and, and that's one of the big points I want to make, is it's a potential to develop every day. Because really the only time you're going to develop a hit tool is at 7 o'clock if you're just hitting straight up EP and you're hitting flips and things like that. To improve your plate discipline, to improve your understanding as a hitter of your approach and everything that you're going into the game with, well, you're only going to improve it at seven o'clock from your experiences right. of actually seeing in game right. at bats with an active mind. Well, what happens if you can train that at 12, one o'clock of an early BP? Well, you can. And that's what good organizations are going to do for their guys. They're going to put them in a position to train their hit tool 
at one o'clock. And then guess what? It gets easier at seven o'clock and it gets easier at that next month. And when you make it to the big league, it might not be. Hessen Kersen very well could hit 240 with 25, 30 bombs his first three years and be still a productive big leaguer, but be platoon risk and swing and miss and not hit for high average. But if they continue to let him grit his teeth and just be Heston Kersen, and Austin Hendricks the same way, just be Austin Hendrick, just like the Rangers, just let Joey Gallo, just be Joey Gallo. And the Dodgers just let Jock Peterson be Jock Peterson. These guys are going to eventually – become more self-aware of what works for them and sure they might not hit two, 250 sure it could hit 230 but average is overrated in today's game anyway if they get better plate discipline and their walks go up hit 220 that's fine if you have a 400 obp like a guy like joey gallo it was close to when he was hitting 220 because pitchers are still scared of you ask any big league pitcher they'd rather throw to Luis Arias with the Twins or Joey Gallo when he was hitting right. 220, they're going to say they'd rather pit to Arias even though if he hits 340 and never swings and right. misses. So they'd rather give up the single than the big homer that leaves the stadium in Texas because it's embarrassing. And they're on ESPN, Tom 10, with the guy hitting a nuke off of him. So it's just you have to let that guy develop naturally. And it's not it's not like power developing. Like, I mean, Yelich took a little longer, but Bellinger came quicker. Those are the, the prototypical hit over right. power guys that develop right. power. Yelich took like five years to develop power, and obviously look at what he's doing now. And we could dive into what he does specifically, which is really interesting because he's not your normal process of swing change. And like kind of like Bellinger got a little uphill. Yelich actually thinks downhill and catches it further out in front. But as for these hitters, you just have to let them develop naturally. And I think the Phillies have a guy, because that was originally the question, who has that right thought process of training an active mind and right. developing every day. And there's always going to be the need for feel-good BP. I mean, if you – mental state – Steve Springer is one of my favorite guys to listen to talk about hitting, a former, former big leaguer for a little bit. And he talks about hitting, and it's basically all mental. And I 100% agree. I mean, sports psych is the biggest thing. It Confidence is the number one tool of hitting. And I heard this one today. The best pitcher in the MLB is self-doubt. So there's always going to be need time to have confidence as a hitter. It's the most important thing. Right. But you can still develop. And then, you know what we do on Fridays? It's Feel Good Friday. Hey, Heston Kirsten and Austin Henry, go put balls off the warehouse. Here it is straight up BP let's see what you can do and then they have their feel good round they go into the weekend feeling good but guess what they did Monday through Thursday they grinded what's up guys thanks for checking out the backside ground ball podcast on YouTube to listen to full episodes we are currently streaming on whatever app you listen to to get your podcast please help us out by subscribing to the show as well as here on YouTube so you never miss any of our awesome content if you ever have a question or just want to talk baseball with Trevor and myself, go ahead and follow both of us. Our Twitter is in the description below. We love talking baseball and we appreciate our fans.